What's going on? Glendon Cameron, and I mentioned in the video that I was gonna do what Atlanta was like in the 80s, right? And I started thinking, it's just way too much for one video. So I'm gonna create a new playlist, and there's gonna be maybe six to 10 videos of me talking about what Atlanta looked like when I came here in 1988 compared to what it is today. And I didn't, I kind of struggled to like, where do I start? Where do I start? Because, you know, when I get in those situations of where do I start, I just start somewhere. So it is Saturday, it is 1.30 p.m. at Greenbrier Mall. And right now I'm parked in front of what used to be the Magic Johnson Theater. Now, I'm going to have, uh, I'm gonna take the drone up and I'm gonna do some voiceover commentary. So I don't even know what I'm gonna say, but this is the beginning. And I decided to call the playlist when Atlanta was beautiful. Because when I first came to Atlanta, it was a beautiful place. It was amazing. The, and also on that note, Atlanta was friendly. Cause that's one video I'm gonna do because I came from Schofield Barracks, 25th Infantry Division, and I never felt lonely, misplaced. Uh, I got a video I'm gonna do, like what the people, my new coworkers did for me my first few weeks. I'm gonna do that. That's just the whole, whole, probably my first year in Atlanta, I'm gonna do a video of that. Cause it, it was just so easy to make friendships and to meet people and to develop relationships it was so easy it was effortless it really was compared to what it is here in Atlanta today so once again new playlist when Atlanta was beautiful and this is going to be the first video what happened to Green Bar and I'm going to talk about what I know has happened to this place and like I said right there I'm at the Magic Johnson Theater which has been closed I don't even know how many years. I gotta research when it closed, but, so let's take the drone up. I've actually moved to another area. This isn't the Magic Johnson Theater, but it's another business that is closed. What I want to represent is, it's 1.30 on a Saturday morning. And I want you, well, Saturday afternoon. And I want you guys to close your eyes. And what I'm gonna do with the drone is go over Greenbrier Mall. And I want to show you how empty these parking lots are. In 1988, 1989, this time of day, the same time of year, every parking lot would be full. I had no problems getting into Greenbrier Mall. Now, you'll see a mass of cars over here to the right, but if you look over to the left, empty parking lot, empty parking lot, empty parking lot. And as we roll around to what used to be Riches, the end store was Riches, empty parking lots. Both in stores, Riches and the Burlington Coat Factory are closed. So these were supposed to be, well, I think it's called an anchor store. In 1988, this parking lot at 1.30 on a Saturday morning would have been not only full, not only full, like you see, that's a Green Bar Parkway. Um, it would have been a traffic jam. You had to wait to get into Greenbrier Mall and these other associate businesses. All these parking lots would have been full. And one of the things that I can, I started go, cause when I moved, cause I used to live like not too far from Greenbrier Mall, literally walking distance. And I'm gonna tell you my first trip to Greenbrier Mall. Um, 
my boy Brown, we were in the military, and he's like, hey, let's go to the mall. I said, all right. So he had a car, so I rode with him, and we hit 166 and went to the mall, and it was jammed, packed. What the kids would do on the weekend is they would cruise the mall. That was one of the reasons that there were no parking spots, and literally they would cruise the mall. Uh, dudes would be cruising for girls. And one of the things that I found to be extraordinary was you had a lot of children of upper middle class black parents up at the mall in daddy's bins. So you could be out cruising the mall and you can run into a Claire Huxtable. I mean, it like th this is a shell of the former Greenbrier. Now, over to the left, that was the Magic Johnson Theater. And I'm gonna tell you, Greenbrier Mall used to be jumping. It used to be jumping. And the Greenbrier Mall, that's the Magic Johnson Theater right there, uh, which has, okay, some very unique air conditioning units on top. And this is the other side of Greenbrier Mall. This is 130. Like, just close your eyes and imagine every parking lot full in this little stretch right here that's close to the trees. Bumper to bumper to bumper. Nice cars. BMWs. Mercedes. Saab. Saab was really, really big back then. Volvo. Volvo was really, really big back then. And this would be every weekend at Greenbrier Mall. Every weekend. And every, there, there were no empty stores in Greenbrier Mall in the 80s. There were no empty stores. People literally who had to wait to get a spot in there. And I remember here at this end cap, that's when I got my first richest credit card. And they gave me like a $20,000 limit. Because if you didn't know, Riches gave you a credit card with multiple categories. You had the category for furniture. You had the category for jewelry. You had the category for clothes. So you might, like, if you just had a regular Riches credit card and they gave you like 2000 And then if you went to the credit department and said, hey, I wanted to buy some furniture, they may raise your credit limit to $10,000. This is how it was in the 80s. Now... That over to the left was Camelton Road. And, you know, interestingly enough, when I was leaving, I had some memories because there were so many businesses that were closed on Camelton Road. In the 80s, there were no closed businesses on Camelton Road. There was It was wide open for business. And I feel that this was a sign because I don't know if all of the activity that used to be at Greenbrier Mall went over to Camp Creek because Camp Creek Parkway didn't exist in the Greenbrier Mall's heyday. It wasn't around. It didn't exist. It, it wasn't part of the landscape. But this is sad, man. It is just sad. I remember all of the good times. I remember, do you remember record stores when you could buy albums? Because, all right, as we're coming down here, <clears throat> right here to the right, this big building, which is now a beauty supply store, used to be Circuit City. And I remember getting my first tower stereo system from that <clears throat> Circuit City. And we used to have uh, stereo wars in the barracks. And if you've ever heard of a Serwin Vega speaker or the 701 Bose speakers, these were highly coveted speakers back in the day. And, you know, people who were like in Germany, they would get these <clears throat> massive stereo systems and bring them back. And such good times. I remember going to Greenbrier Mall with Brown. And we were just walking around the mall. It was busy, the food court was bumping, and we ran into some girls. And I'm gonna do a whole different video about dating in Atlanta in the 80s. We met these girls Saturday afternoon. We talked to them, Saturday night we went out. It was so different back then. 
it was so such a different world now one of the things you will see because as i do more videos is how many businesses are closed this used to be a thriving hotbed of economic activity all these stores were open all these people were going to the mall people like literally and i will say Greenbrier, because I got to think, 2002 was dating this girl. We went to the mall, we went to the record store. And I think we got some CDs, because CDs were coming in. Because CDs were coming in in the 80s, but they were still selling albums. They were still selling records. But, yeah, this is one of the craziest things because what they had are these little traffic cones and you couldn't even get over here and I don't even know what this business was or is I don't even know if it's open but Greenbrier Mall was like a different world thank you for someone who uh, chimed into the comments for the name of that because that's the name of that show it was very much like a different world. It was um, very much, because you had Spellman and Morehouse around the corner, and you would have a lot of their students coming over to the mall. Once again, I think this is some kind of, I don't, I don't really know what this is. I know it's a massive building, and I know if I was to rent that, we're talking fifty, seventy thousand dollars per month to rent a building of that size, even in the hood, because this is massive. Slam Atlanta, I don't know what that is. Um, and one of the things that you will see that right there used to be the Burlington Coat Factory, which was humping for many, many years, and it's been closed. I don't know how long. I remember getting some leather gloves and some sweaters from the Burlington Co. Factory. I mean, this was pretty much a sad moment for me as I went through and I, I just remember what this used to be. And I remember when the Magic Johnson Theater opened. It was an event. Um, the staff was trained. Welcome to the Magic Johnson Theater. How may we help you? A very professional, very nice operation. I don't even know when that closed. I'll have to Google this stuff because this is nothing compared to what I, I you know, it's like, it is nothing compared to what it used to be. It is nothing. Now that's coming off 166 and this is going across the street to um, another, like the, when I was leaving, I was absolutely stunned at all of the closed businesses. I mean, it wasn't just a few. It was like, I would say estimating 34, 35% of the businesses were closed, maybe 40%. I mean, it was a lot. And I'll, I'll do that video. But <clears throat> this is... <sighs> You can't even remember, if you weren't here, if you didn't see it, you didn't know about it, you didn't understand it, you have no frame of reference because if you come to Atlanta and you go over there and you see this, this is what you see. I mean, I remember in the summer, one of the things we would do <clears throat> is everybody would wake up, play the car, they would wash their car, and then we would go cruise at the mall just ride around just drive around in circles around the mall just drive around in circles and we would see who we would can meet and what we could come up with it was such a different world back then it was so i have no words to express how sad this was because i was still relatively young I was still growing and I grew up in Atlanta and I met 
and it, it was just very very different and also something else because i used to do quite a bit of drone footage in sandy springs and i was um really shocked at the difference in i really shouldn't say shocked i should say it's been a while since i have been to south atlanta it's been a while because see this is this is my norm this is what i'm used to i'm used to big houses pools nice cars and i was over there and it, it made me sad because if you did not know there's a problem with real estate uh this um real estate bubble that we're in this real estate situation that we're in has dramatically pushed up the home prices in southwest atlanta i'm seeing homes for rent in southwest atlanta for three and four and five thousand dollars that wasn't happening years ago so due to the pandemic these people are starting to get some love for their for their property but typically there was there was uh, let's see Back in the day, there was a distinct divide because over at the uh, Greenbrier, around the corner into, I don't think I got a shot of it, is the Omega House. And this was used to be a facility owned by Omega Sci-Fi. And they used to host events and things there. And like, man, you know, it's gonna take me a minute to get this together because as I sit back and I really, really think of what Atlanta used to be and what it is now it makes me very very sad it makes me really really sad because as i do this series when atlanta was beautiful um because i don't really know why the stores at green bar mall closed i'll have to do some research and talk about that because i'm not sure why they closed because when they opened up Camp Creek Parkway, and I may even go over there as part of this series, because like I said, I don't really go over there because I don't live over there. And it's like, well, it's a little closer now since I live in Buckhead, but it was about 30, 40 minutes to go on that side. And I, I know people over there that I have not seen in years. And I might um, try to pull up on my girl, Dina. Oh no, y'all might be seeing some of my friends on camera. You, you never know but it is such a difference in the dichotomy between that side of town and where i live and as you know as we go along with this series we'll be talking about more and more things so this is just the part one i'll put the link to the playlist under the videos i'll try to oh am i Am I about to run into a power line? Yep. <laughs> and that's the end of that. All right, guys. I will see you in the next one.